Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ziza. If you're new, I hope you're all well and in the best of health. So today's video is going to be a get ready with me. It's going to be a makeup tutorial and a hijab tutorial, like I said on my Instagram, with a mixture of a Q&A. So just before we get into that, please subscribe and like while you're here. Just quick disclaimer before we get into it. This was filmed at 8am. I look so tired. I look so gross. Um, I feel like it, it's just kind of almost like a fail video, but I'm going to try to edit this really well so it looks okay. Um, a lot of things went wrong. The camera, cut, the camera cut off. I feel like I wasn't even looking at the camera the whole time. So just please bear with me. I will keep getting better at these YouTube videos as I go along. I still feel like I'm not very comfortable at talking to the camera just yet, but I will hopefully keep getting better. So yeah, so let's get into this. The foundation I use is the Rimmel Long Lasting Finishing 24 25 hour breathable one. I used to get the Rimmel Wake Me Up one, which is blue, but this is literally like, it's literally like seven pounds and it's the best foundation I've used. I'll get so many compliments on it. So I just take a beauty blender. I give it a spritz of water and this just helps it make it look a bit more natural in my opinion, I would say. So I'm just gonna pop that on and then answer my first question. So once I'm done with that, I will go in with a Rimmel Wake Me Up concealer. I get this shade in the classic beige. I think this is like four or five pounds. So I do get one that's lighter than my skin tone to brighten up my under eye area. And then I go back in with my beauty blender and just blend it out. Next question, what's your day job? I work in information security and unfortunately there's not a lot of women in that area, um, which does suck. It tends to be quite a male dominated area. But if, you, if you're studying or if you don't know what to do with your life, I'd highly recommend going into this area. But I've only been in this role for about eight to nine months and I'm loving it so far. Next question is pros and cons about getting married young okay i'm just going to say the next step before i go into that so i'll get the collection sheer loose powder and this is literally like three pounds and then i'll go under this with my under my eyes to set the concealer okay so we'll start with the pros um i would say a huge pro is like it's kind of like you're just living with your best friend and there's no pressure and it's just you're both kind of figuring things out um so you like kind of it's like a it's like not a lot of teamwork which is really cute i think you really get to grow together and get to know each other and things are quite like relaxed and fun i think generally if you work as a team things go quite smoothly like um so i'm going in with this primark eyebrow pencil is only one pound and i have quite a few of these and I don't do too much to my eyebrows because I'd say they're quite full already. So I just gently fill in the areas where there's um, less hair and then I'll just brush it out to make sure it looks more natural. And a con I would say is, I think when you get married young, you're gonna have other barriers that maybe older couples uh, will not. For example, like financial difficulties that might come a bit uh, harder to you because obviously you're younger, you, you haven't had as much time to build a, like a bank basically. But at the same time, I think that if you work as a team, you can easily just get through it. After I've let this set for a couple of minutes, I'll go in with a big brush. And these are all the real technique ones. Um, I remember how crazy people used to go over them um, back in the day. So I'll use this matte press powder. I don't know what happened, but literally my camera just stopped recording everything. Uh, it's so annoying because I literally did all of this and no one even saw it and I was speaking through all of the products and I just don't know what to do anymore and I don't I can't refilm this because I can't take it off okay so since my camera stopped recording halfway when I was doing my makeup I'll just go really really quickly through the products I use so I think the last product you saw was me going on um rubbing the foundation sorry rubbing the powder off my face um and this time I'm filming forward so I can see if the camera stops so for eyeliner i use the ps liquid eyeliner it's from primark it was one pound highly highly recommend the tips are amazing you have to go for the more softer ones and the harder ones for bronzer i use the hula bronzer and um, this is a bit more expensive but this was a gift but it's very very good for blush okay this is really gross because i've had this for way too many years but i use the primark 
one is only one pound and it's in the shade Muscovado. Um, I don't think they do it anymore. I haven't been able to find it in store anyway because I want a new one. Um, but this is the one that I find gives the most natural kind of blush looking look. So I definitely recommend if you can find it. And then for eyeliner, I use the L'Oreal um, telescopic one. This is really, really good if you want to get like those spidey kind of lashes. And then I just went over with a Maybelline Lash Sensational one. Again, these are really, really cheap as well. And I think that's kind of it. Oh, I'm sorry. For lip liner, I use this one from Primark. It's in the shade Toffee. It's just called a PS Lip Liner. It's one pound. Kylie Jenner. Um, I would say it's so similar to her one, like the brown. Um, and so many people just kind of found it and I think Primark just discontinued it and they just didn't do it anymore so I couldn't find it in store for absolute ages. Okay, so I'm going to show you two hijab styles that I use. I wear a hijab cap and a little scarf to kind of make the bun look a bit more even and not a dip. And I wear hijab caps because I feel like if you don't, your hijab just slips off. Now to start off with what I've just just done is I have a really short side and then I have a really really long side and I just basically do a little point and then frame my face and if you guys already have seen in the video I've got a really fat chubby face so I feel like this gives the illusion that I don't when I really do so it is a little bit of cash brushing I'm not gonna lie I feel like I look like a fat egg okay and then I take the side and I flip the scarf and I'll usually flip this behind, this random part behind too, sorry. And I'll take it all the way around and pop it like this. And I try to make this quite fat because I think, you know, if you've ever worn hijab, you've been to that whole phase where it just looks humongous. So this is literally it. Okay, the next one. I'm now I'm gonna try, so I have two hijab styles, like I said. So the next hijab style, I'm gonna try with these chiffon style scarves. Um, and this lovely scarf was gifted to me by the Modest Closet on Instagram. So I will link her um, Instagram below. Literally the packaging was so nice. The scarf smells absolutely amazing. And she popped in a free hijab cap. So to start off, I've just got one longer side and again, one shorter side. This, I don't even know why I'm doing this as a tutorial because it's so basic. So I'll just start off with a point and then again, frame my face. And I'll tuck it in. And then I literally just grab this part and flip it over. And as you can see, the natural feathers just fall behind. So, and I usually wear this style for more fancy events. So I realized that when I was talking about a bunch of the questions from the QA that was asked, uh, obviously the camera cut off. So I'm just gonna quickly, quickly run through. So what's your goal with social media? Because you seem to know your stuff. So I really want to make this a second income and um, that was my goal from the beginning to make this another source of income because i think covid has shown how important it is to have multiple sources of income um and like i said i don't really find this quite hard work in general because i love it because I've, I've i've just always loved social media and i've always wanted to do this from quite a young age so um um that's, i feel like i've watched youtube for so so long i kind of know how the youtubers do stuff but um i think like as i get as i grow and grow and grow i will invest into more camera products and stuff like that to make it even better inshallah how old are you so i'm 23 and i feel like the the hard thing with being quite young on a home account is um everyone that you follow has amazing beautiful homes and they tend to be a lot older than you their mothers and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's more kind of like, I just can't wait till I get my own home. And I'm just kind of like, oh, I just want it to happen now kind of thing, but it will happen. You just need to work hard for it and inshallah, we all get there. Okay, what did you do in uni? I did a business and IT degree and I'd highly, highly recommend anyone to do that because it just opened you to such a wide range of jobs. And that degree did help me land my current job. What's the next place you're traveling to? I am going to Turkey, inshallah. We haven't had a honeymoon yet. Um, and I know everyone is kind of traveling and they're going to like Europe and stuff like that. And I just feel like if you're going to somewhere, a place in Europe, which tend to be quite a cheap, quick holiday, I feel like when you add up all the COVID tests, I think you take three. Um, it just gets a bit expensive. And then it just kind of, I don't know, I guess like it might be worth it for a lot of people because we haven't traveled in so long. But just for me, I'm just waiting for everything to kind of relax and for COVID to go and then inshallah we'll go. Um, who's your home decor inspo? So, they're mostly American um, creators, so Lone Fox, 
uh, I absolutely love his DIYs. His style is just so amazing. I get a lot of inspiration from him. By inspiration, I don't mean like anything that I do in my house right now. I think in the future, I would love to aspire to have a similar sense of style. Um, Studio McGee, probably the number one that I would love to aspire to be like when I have my own house. I think it just gives me very beach, relaxing, calm vibes. I absolutely love her style and how she just, she mixes like textures and patterns and it just ends up looking amazing. And lastly, I feel like the most closest one to my style right now is Aspen Ovard. Um, she has a lot of pink and I used to have a lot of pink in my kind of style, but it's kind of completely gone to neutrals and I can see she's all, um, going towards neutrals as well. Um, but I absolutely love her style. It's so boho, so just, it's so, so nice. And her house is absolute goals. How do you get so many collabs? So I think I said this on my Instagram, but I find it quite hard to say no to small businesses. I think like if the small businesses sells a products that I like, then I will accept the collab and it hopefully, you know, if it gets some more exposure, more followers, um, more sales, then it's just kind of worth it. Um, but uh, I don't obviously accept every collab offer that I get. One thing in common that every, for every collab opportunity I've had is that the person has said that they really like my pictures or feed and that's um, and that's kind of been the number one thing of why they want to collab. So it's super important to, you know, just make sure you have a nice aesthetic feed, take nice pictures. And it's not really about the followers because I got my first collab at 2000 followers and it was from a well-known brand. So it's not about followers, it's literally just keep tagging brands in your pictures and hopefully collabs will come your way. Are you tempted to switch up your home decor style and add some color? I am not right now, no. I think like the next place I will still keep it neutral because I feel like I haven't fully explored my neutral style living in a place that's furnished and I can't do anything to it. So hopefully my next style, which will be unfurnished, I will still explore the neutral. But I've like, I've been seeing so many pictures where people are, you know, adding color and like color blocking and it looks so good and I am really tempted, but I just don't know how well I would do it. So I think, fingers crossed, I would love to explore, but I'm a little bit scared to do that. <clears throat> and lastly, your advice for marriage outside of your ethnicity. So for me, um, I would definitely say what helped was just being patient. I feel like if you're, if it's, this is the first time that your parents are hearing of this, you have to understand that it's going to be quite a big shock for them. And you know, just keep being patient, keep um, and be respectful, so they so they can see that you are mature enough to get married. Um, and just keep praying, make lots of dua. And I know it's so difficult, and I had it a lot more easier because my siblings got married outside of our ethnicity but um it was still difficult at the same time like it took a lot a lot of patience a lot of kind of being with like talking to your parents and that is the main thing keep talking do not ever let it get to the stage where you're not talking so yeah just keep talking keep being patient and inshallah it will come okay cool thank you so much for asking these questions and i really hope this video isn't a mess but i feel like it is going to be since the video cut off so i'm sorry this is not how i wanted the video to go we'll see we'll see Cut, 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 cut.